Harry Douglas, take a look at this. I want you to watch Patrick Mahomes scrambling to his left, and that's Xavier Worthy, the lightning fast rookie, 60 yards downfield for the catch. And with that one play, it seems pretty clear that the Kansas City Chiefs serve notice they remain the team to beat. Harry, you're my receiver. Explain that. Well, number one, if you're a DB, if you're going to be playing against the Kansas City Chiefs, get your Bengay, your Icy Hot, your Flexol, put it on your hamstring, your quad. Son, get out of your back pedal. 4-2-1 <laughs> is coming at you. <laughs> he is, quite literally, for those who are not aware, Xavier Worthy, he ran the fastest 40 in the history of the NFL, of the, you know, the, the football combine, the NFL combine. So he's literally that fast, and there he is behind the defense on that 60-yard dime from Patrick Mahomes. Herman Edwards, you have two different perspectives on this because you were a defensive coach and before that you were a defensive back. So talk to me, Herman. What are we doing with this rookie in Kansas City? Well, Harry mentioned it, but, you know, he's a guy. There's a lot of guys that run fast, like he has 4-2 speed, but some guys only have 5-2 hands. But this guy can catch, actually. So that's a problem. And, and he can beat you vertically. Um, he, he's a guy that, that, that also, when you think about the Kansas City Chiefs, it's really catch after the run. You know, Mahomes is not a guy that's going to sit back there and throw deep balls. I mean, that's not the Andy Reid offense. It's more of crossing routes, those kind of deals where he can catch it and run, and this guy has speed along with Brown. And then the problem is, and I've said it the last three years, no one can cover Kelsey. We haven't covered him yet. You could have 12 guys. They can't cover Kelsey. But Mahomes, <laughs> obviously, you know, best quarterback in football. And when he can throw it the length of the field like this with speed, with yeah. a guy that can catch. This is a 4-2 guy that can catch. That's a good thing. Very quickly, you made that point to me this morning. Yep. People think of Xavier Worthy, or people who don't know him and didn't watch him in college may think, well, he's just some freakishly fast guy. He's much more than that. Well, yes, he's a natural wide receiver that happens to be fast and 4-2-1 speed. He's the guy that can route you up, run just about any route on the route tree, can get in and out of breaks. And like Coach mentioned when he was commentating over this, over this video, he has hands. So, Xavier Worthy, watch out, because, boy, he's coming. You know, and Dan, I love it when teams are intentional. You saw the, the Chiefs knew what their weakness was. Yes. They went out, they drafted this guy, and they signed Hollywood Brown. Right. So, the first four years of Patrick Mahomes as a starter, he averaged 14 touchdown passes a year from outside the red zone. Then two years ago, he had seven, and last year he had three. What happened? They traded Tyreek Hill. They don't have that downfield speed element in their offense anymore. So you're not coming in and asking a rookie to be Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill's one of the best there is. True. But he, he does bring an element that the offense has been lacking the last couple of years. And another point Harry made this morning, I want to give him credit. Uh, if your quarterback can throw it like that, run into his left <laughs> and throw it that far, it probably doesn't really matter it, that it, much. It's insane, Who Brian. your receivers are. And to your point, though, the Chiefs' uh, pass game last year, they yeah. were 25th in explosive pass rate. Yeah. yeah. So that, that, that wasn't good at all. So it has to Just change. Keep showing this. He's on a dead run to his left, spins, flips his hips, and puts that ball right there. Sorry, this is what you're going to do right here. It's great. <laughs> in deep prayer. Herman, wow. all kidding aside, I mean, you were a defensive back. You must have played against guys who are faster than you. When the other guy is just faster yeah. than you are, what do you do? Well, you're hoping you get a pass rush and you keep the quarterback in the pocket. Yeah. What happened in this one, he broke contain. Look at the, look at the play. He, he, got out, he got on the edge. As soon as he gets on the edge, you're screaming at your safety. Help, help, because that guy's running fast, and you know he's running to the post. <laughs> that, that team, I mean, they, they, look, the Chiefs got the, better. You know, That's the scary part. They got better in the places where they were weak, and while they were weak in those places, they won back-to-back -back Super Bowls. Right. So it is going to be very tough to see how anyone knocks them off. All right, we got a lot of football coming up today. But AFC North, we got quarterback questions in a fascinating division. Hey, Graziano, I'll start with you. Can Russell Wilson revive his career as a Steeler this year? I'm inclined to think no because I, I just don't see Russell Wilson getting back to the player he was at the, you know, the great highlight points of his career. What he hasn't done the last two years and still has a chance to do is adjust and become a different kind of quarterback than he was during his heyday in Seattle. If he can do that, I think he can have some success with the Steelers, but I don't think we're going to see the old Russell Wilson again. I think he's going to have to become a different kind of quarterback. Harry, let's go to Cincinnati. 
Cincinnati. Can a healthy Joe Burrow make the Bengals the second best team in the AFC? I believe so. We're talking about a guy, Joe Burrow, the two years out of the four that we've seen him healthy. AFC championship game appearance, Super Bowl appearance. I also believe when Joe Burrow's healthy, there's no one that plays quarterback better than he does from the pocket, maneuvering it, uh, filling things, being able to get the ball out to his wide receivers, running backs, and tight ends. So I like Joe Burrow. Herman Edwards, I want to go to Baltimore with you. Can Lamar Jackson follow up his second MVP season with his first Super Bowl appearance? Well, he needs to. When you think about his playoff record now, all of a sudden it's two and four. Um, and in the last um, six playoff games, four of those, this offense didn't score over 20 points. So Lamar feels it. He knows it. Um, Coach Harbaugh uh, obviously stood on the table for him, uh, said some really good things about Lamar Jackson. But I think how they use Lamar Jackson this year in this offense is going to be critical. So, so let's get into that. First, in case anyone didn't hear it and doesn't know what Herman is referring to. The Ravens just show up at training camp, and on the very first day, John Harbaugh passionately defended his quarterback, who I will remind you again, won MVP of the league <laughs> last year, from criticism that he hasn't taken his team to the Super Bowl. There's a lot of great things said about Lamar, but there's a lot of stuff that said that you got to just scratch your head about and kind of wonder, what's that person even thinking, you know? So, but we take it personally. You know, Lamar's a guy... All his life, Lamar Jackson has been a guy who's been answering those same questions. I'm talking about since he was a kid, junior high, high school, college, the draft, the success he's had in the National Football League, and it still comes up. Okay? And he's still growing. He's got a growth mindset. He's going to get better and better, no doubt. And the vision that we have together is that Lamar Jackson is going to become and be known and be recognized as the greatest quarterback ever to play in the history of the National Football League. Okay, so I mean that's a good it's a good goal that there are a couple sure. of different it's a lot to unpack in that opening day. Like normally you show up, hey, how is everybody's off season? Right, everybody healthy? Yeah, yeah right. You showed up with a lot to say. You're starting your training camp tour tomorrow yeah. there, right? Yeah. In Baltimore. So I guess my first question is what what exactly is it that precipitated him feeling like he needed to do that? I don't know. I, I'm not aware of any, like, current Lamar Jackson criticism, right, that, that, that's kind of floating out there. So, I, I mean, I know he got asked a question about it, but I don't know if it was in reference to anything specific or just sort of the ongoing stuff uh, that he refers to. I mean, I, look, we're at the point with Lamar Jackson – where we can definitively say a few things. When he's healthy and plays the whole season and finishes the season healthy, he's the MVP of the league. Like, that's happened twice now, and that's been the result. We also know that he hasn't had the postseason success. That's a small sample size that people get judged on, uh, and that's the way of the world. But, uh, and until he has it, uh, then it'll, that'll, that'll follow him around. But he's 27 and he's won the MVP twice. And he's capable of doing things on a football field that literally no one else is. Uh, I, I think we, uh, I, I, I'm with John Harbaugh that I think whatever criticism there is out there of Lamar goes too far and is largely unfounded. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure exactly who he was talking to here yesterday. I, I guess my, that's, that's the way I wanted to frame this question here, Harry. The criticism that exists of Lamar Jackson, is it fair? To a certain degree, because you can't ignore everything he's been able to do throughout the regular season. He's 2-4 and four in the postseason, like Coach Herman Edwards just mentioned. But at the same time, we got to remember, back in the NBA, there's this guy called Michael Jordan. Yeah. And he stopped a lot of people from winning NBA championships, mm -hmm. a lot of greats uh, of the game of basketball. Well, when you look at Lamar Jackson, you look at Josh Allen, you look at a lot of these other quarterbacks that are young, there's this guy named Patrick Mahomes that is keeping a lot of these players from winning NFL championships. That's just the reality of it. There's no way around it. There's no way to cut the corner. But I think for Lamar Jackson now, when you get in these playoff settings, what I want him to do, don't forget who you are. I love that you're learning to play the quarterback position from the pocket better. But when you get into these matchups, result back to who you are and, and what got you there. Uh, let, let me take, have Herman Edwards take everyone down memory lane a little bit here, okay? F first and foremost, with regard to Mahomes, I feel the need to keep saying this. Patrick Mahomes is the only starting quarterback in the NFL under the age of 35 who has won a Super Bowl. Right. So, so the same criticisms of Lamar Jackson, if you want to attach them, can be attached to Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, uh, J uh, Jalen Hurts, uh, uh, J Justin Herbert, anyone you want. No one else under the age of 35 has won one. So but put that aside for a moment. Herman, when you were the coach of the Jets, you played the Indianapolis Colts in a playoff game 
um, at, at the end of the 2002 season. Do you happen to remember how that game ended? Yeah, pretty good, by the way. And we played uh, Peyton Manning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And what was the final score yeah, of that game? Do you it remember? was uh, 50 something. It was 41 to nothing. I, you probably and, remember it was 50 something. Here's was it 41? The point. Yeah, that, okay, here's 41 the point. nothing. All right. you, beat, you destroyed Peyton Manning and the Indianapolis Colts. That was his third playoff game. It made him 0 3 in his playoff career. And all of the conversation coming out of it on shows like Mike and Mike in the Morning and all the others was well, Peyton Manning can't win the big one. He's great in the regular season, but he just can't win when, the, when it really matters. Now, I'm not sitting here telling you Lamar Jackson is going to be Peyton Manning. He's a long way to go. Manning is one of the greatest quarterbacks that ever lived. But I'm saying we've had these conversations, Herman, before. Yeah, we have, and, 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 the, and, and the problem is, and it's a problem, and quarterbacks understand this, it's always about the quarterback now, and what have you done for me lately? Have you won Super Bowls? It doesn't matter how you play in the playoffs anymore, can you win Super Bowls? And you think about it, uh, Captain America, when he was with the New England Patriots, if you were in the AFC, you weren't going to a Super Bowl. That was almost a 10-year run, okay? And it didn't matter how good you were. Captain America was going to the Super Bowl.